We discussed earlier also the, the geometries, and this actually puts them more under the limelight because this, this section we're actually dealing with, the mathematics. Now, this compares the two geometries, the non-Euclidean and the Euclidean. Nicht Euclidish is non-Euclidean, and Euclidish is uh, the Euclidean system. Here we have um, the circle, the straight line, and the point, the radius. And here these shapes are shapes, these ovals or these, or these uh, ellipses are taken as sections through a cylinder, uh, taken through a right angled cone, which means a cone where the, the, the shape is actually a right angle and it's circular this way. Any inclined section through a cone will also produce an ellipse. So all these are the elements of our technical world. So the circle, the straight line, and point are all part of the same uh, element, in fact. The circle uh, has a certain radius. If I reduce the radius to zero, then the curvature is infinite and I have the condition of the point. If I increase the radius to infinity, then I have a, a position where the curvature is zero and I have the straight line. So the straight line, the circle, and the point are all aspects of the one element of the circle. But the circle and the straight line and point do not exist anywhere in the physical universe. They are of the mind. They are transcendental. Um, they belong to the realm of measurement between things. They belong to the realm of thought. <coughs> Excuse me. But they do not belong to the physical world because we cannot describe natural artifacts using those particular elements. The, the ellipse belongs in these systems uh, because the ellipse is in fact an extended circle. It's like taking the center of the circle and dividing it in two and pulling it out and then you get an ellipse from it. So they are all closed systems. They are all perfect. They cannot be varied because a circle is a line of constant curvature, no thickness. A straight line is a straight line. A straight line means is there's, no, there's no variation. There's no movement about it. It's totally perfect. It therefore cannot reflect any system in, in here, like in nature, change is in here. Uh, there has to be constant change and transformation. And so this is represented by non Euclidean geometry. And this is the geometry of nature. Using this geometry, then uh, we we can uh, draw development from, from the formula which I showed you before which had the, the hyperbola. That was the elevation of this spiral form. Now the spiral form uh, we were looking at it on the one from okay, we will have a larger spiral at the moment but this spiral starts alpha or alpha infinity as Walter Schauberger called it which is the beginning and by rotating an almost number of times seeks always to strive to reach the point Omega. Moving from the straight line to the point. And this is the curvature of matter, of the descent into matter. And the, this, the nature of this particular curve is such that no two parts of it are identical. And so within this also is underwritten not only the, 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 the discontinuous aspect, aspect of of evolution, which is the production of individuals, of individual things, but also the continuous movement of evolution into states of higher and higher order. So along this line, this spiral line, every degree, every, every part of it, the curvature is different. You cannot take a part out here and put in here. It doesn't fit anymore. And so <clears throat> every individuality, all the myriads of atoms, every single thing that exists in this universe can, in a sense, be uh, represented by a small part of the spiral as its characteristic, because there are no two parts of it alike. Um, as you progress towards the center, of course, the velocity increases, uh, the energetic uh, activity increases, 
and you get closer and closer to God, so to speak, because originally Walter called just the theocentric system, where God lay at the center. And the only way, in fact, to reach him was to jump out of space and time. So the, the curve, as it were, as it were, is space-time continuum. The straight line is out of space and time, and so is the point out of space and time. But they are the two bridgeheads by, uh, through, from which life springs into physical existence. Interestingly enough, also, uh, this uh, spiral connects the points of the triangle, the square, the pentagon, the hexagon, the heptagon, the octagon, the nonagon, the decagon, etc., 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 etc. And one of the Im amazing things about this is you begin to learn how, how uh, nature can divide things up with equal angles. If I can find the thing. There no, this is what's getting out of context. Just to show you uh, how this form is also, um, this hyperbolic spiral appears in nature. This is a meteor sat photograph. Here you have the, the diagram I showed you before, and this is virtually the same energetic wall. This is a, a low pressure system, um, and again, it's like the tornado. The energy, the, f the closer you get to the core, the greater the energetic content. Again, the, the same math can be used to explain uh, galaxies. Um, you can have a, gala a galaxy much the same as this. And also, as I, I overlaid that galaxy earlier on in, in the show, <coughs> into this too are all the various... Um, this, this hyperbolic cone, again, can be used to explain all the different frequencies. Uh, from ultraviolet, visible light, infrared, radar, and so on, all as questions of wavelength, of, of distance from the central axis uh, to the outside edge of the, um, the hyperbola. If we move in now on the spiral, we can to go to a closer, a closer view of it. We have made, so to speak, one full revolution from, uh, from alpha, which is infinite distance away there, and we've gone round completely once. We've turned round through 360 degrees, and we arrive at the value of one, because we have one, made one total revolution. And at that point, we can say that the string length, so to speak, is one. We have completed the period of uh, what you might call pregnancy, because before one, there is nothing. There is no wholeness before we arrive at the, 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 the one. And after that, uh, then we are in enter the, the world of, of the physical world. Before that is still transcendental, and from this point one onwards, there has become an individuality. Before an individuality, uh, there is only energy. Uh, and with a string length one, after one full revolution, we have moved into a position of a half, into a third, into a quarter, into a fifth and sixth. Exactly the same in reflection of the hyperbola which went up in the other direction. So uh, here we would have the distance one, there there would be two, so the, the elevation of this would be a, a curve which goes up in the, in the, in the opposite, in, in, in the other dimension. And uh, into this can also be interpreted, uh, can be interpreted musically because each, the string length being one, um, would have a certain tension, and then as we reduced the length of it, the tension would give rise to all the various notes that we're aware, aware of, and it would be just, wherever the string length is, gives you whatever the note is, so to speak. And then you, you find some interesting relationships that in the, ma the major notes on the scale, they are always divided by uh, um, multiples of 15, 30 degrees, 60 degrees between F and G, and so on. Um, and the other um, half notes are in multiples of 3 or, <coughs> or 9. Um, so one begins to get certain insights into to how to, to the patterns of energy by, by uh, looking it through the spiral form. This is also another one which interprets the, in terms of color, uh, that you start with the bass tone where you've got the rather darker color. As you move around, then the color becomes a higher frequency so that it's a lighter color. 
um, but still going through, through the full spectrum so that in, it, it begins to teach you how eventually all colors uh, return to the source from which they came, which was uh, white. And uh, also an idea of the higher vibrations of colors that, for instance, clairvoyance and other sensitives are aware of, which are really me merely harmonics of, of, of the lower ones. 